Republican presidential contender Rick Perry blasted Donald Trump with some of the strongest language we've heard in the escalating feud between Trump and some members of the GOP. The White House has been occupied by giants. But from time to time, it is sought by the small-minded, the divisive figures, propelled by anger, appealing to the worst instincts in the human condition. He offers a barking carnival act that can best be described as Trumpism. A toxic mix of demagoguery and mean-spiritedness and nonsense that will lead the Republican Party to perdition if pursued. Let no one be mistaken. Donald Trump's candidacy is a cancer on conservatism, and it must be clearly diagnosed, excised, and discarded. Perry's criticism came after Trump announced plans to visit the Mexican border on Thursday. Joining us to discuss all of this is Steve Chigueras. He is in our D.C. Bureau. Uh, Steve, so uh, Rick Perry says that Donald Trump is destroying conservatism. Lindsey Graham was destroying cell phones today after what happened with Donald Trump. And Rand Paul is destroying the tax code uh, in a video that came out yesterday. Uh, a, a destructive week, it would seem, so far. How, what, what is happening right now in the Republican field? What's happening is that Donald Trump is getting all the attention with the Republican field. And you're seeing these folks really just trying to, uh, to break through a little bit. Uh, there's 16 people running in the Republican Party right now for president, and Donald Trump is the focus of all of that. And so you get the people who are sort of being uh, directly involved with Donald Trump, Perry and Graham, who have both been insulted by Trump and have exchanged insults. Uh, and they're out there continuing with that. And, and Rand Paul, who uh, is somebody whose uh, numbers have softened a little bit in the polls, and he's just trying to, uh, to get out there and be heard. Steve, Rick Perry calling uh, Donald Trump a cancer on conservatism. Um, Donald Trump has obviously made some personal attacks against Rick Perry as well and the, and the way he looks. But so a lot of this goes back to the immigration comments. That's right. So these comments that, that, that uh, Donald Trump made during his announcement speech about Mexican immigrants uh, being rapists and criminals and, and, and all of that. Um, Perry is pointing to that. Perry is somebody who was governor of, of Texas, the border state, for 14 years. Um, you know, it, it sort of takes that personally a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I mean, Rick Perry is a guy who, and Trump has pointed this out, who's at about 2% in the polls, uh, is looking uh, for a way to uh, garner some attention for himself try to curry uh, a little bit of, of, of goodwill with, with Republicans, he needs uh, to boost his, uh, his poll numbers in order to get into the debates uh, in a couple of weeks. And so one way he thinks he can do it is going right after Donald Trump. It's not an unpopular way to go. Uh, there, there are a lot of people, at least in the Republican establishment, who are not fans of Donald Trump right now. So Perry's just trying to hitch onto that. What do we expect to see at the border tomorrow? So Trump's going to go down there. He's going to uh, tour the border uh, and then talk to uh, talk to the press afterwards. He's going to. Uh, he says he's going to be honored. Uh, it seems like he's going to be honored by uh, one of the uh, Border Patrol Union uh, uh, groups down there. Uh, and so we'll hear from Trump. Uh, you know, it's it's Donald Trump, so I'm sure it'll be uh, entertaining and, and very um, um, uh, introspective. Uh, and then he's going to go and do a town hall meeting type uh, event with um, law enforcement officials down there. So it's not like it's open open to voters or anything. It's open to law enforcement types. And he'll talk about immigration, I'm sure. It's really been the issue that's propelled him over the last few weeks. And we'll hear more about it while he's down there. Steve, Donald Trump's campaign is self-financed. So theoretically, he could stick around for as long as he wants. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, if he's going to make a decision um, about trying to stay in the Republican primary versus launching a third party candidacy, do we have any idea on, on when that might happen if it did? Well, I would think if you look at, at, at past uh, uh, elections, I mean, he, would, he probably could get through, uh, uh, you know, the Iowa caucuses and, and New Hampshire uh, primary, and if it's not looking good for him for the nomination, then uh, try to amount a third party bid. But I, personally, I think if it gets to that point and he's, uh, he's not doing very well within uh, the Republican primary process and, and he's getting shellacked at that point, I don't know what audience there is left for him for a third party bid. Um, if it's the type of thing where he's doing okay in the Republican primaries, but not enough to actually win the nomination, then maybe he could parlay that into a third party bid. So I think we sort of have to see where this goes for him and where his support is uh, come February or March. Steve Chigaris joining us from uh, DC. Steve, thanks very much. Thanks.